threats that we have talked, Leptospira is one. Now, we have to pay the price of globalization, and these are some of the newer viruses and pathogens that are coming. Now, very important thing is the donor skin must be very properly cleaned. This is the first safety step for ensuring that bacterial contamination of blood and blood products is reduced. We can have exogenous bacteria, we can have endogenous bacteria which may enter into your blood. This is how bacterial contamination of products is seen. Now, what I, this is what I try to say. We started with the rapid test. We came down to ELISA. We came down to chemiluminescence, enhanced chemiluminescence technology, NAT. But what I personally feel as a transfusion medicine person in our country to keep things at a very better cost effectivity, I think chemiluminescence technology, the enhanced chemiluminescence technology, should be adopted by majority of the blood banks, as all these tests have got their lot of disadvantages that we are undertaking in our blood banks. Rapid tests have lot of disadvantages, and you will be surprised to know that I have visited several blood banks which are exclusively doing only rapid tests, by rapid kits. They are very least sensitive uh, tests, and I think they should be avoided. ELISA has its own drawbacks, especially of carry forward and other things. This was the news in Times of India where there was a study in Ames that how many units were found really infective in spite of the fact that they had undergone ELISA testing. Now changing trends include that ELISA is getting almost obsolete, it's about 25 years, 30 years old technology, even if they are claiming fourth generation kits and all that, but to my knowledge, I personally feel two fields that are important are chemiluminescence technology, especially the enhanced chemiluminescence, and of course, NAT nucleic acid testing, which is very high cost effective. 1,000 rupees per unit test. So if I start charging you about 2,500 to 3,000 units for a, uh, rupees for a unit, I, uh, you will uh, kill me. But NAT has another several disadvantages, although as a fashion people are talking high about NAT, NAT does not have HIV-2 testing, it is only HIV-1. The, the time period is not less than five to six hours. Then many times in NAT there are a lot of manual steps. There's a lot of manpower investment, about more than a crore rupees required for setting up a NAT lab. High specialized manpowers. And also then in NAT testing, the most dangerous thing that we have found is that there are false negative results. Unless and until 70 copies per microliter are obtained, NAT will not pick up that sample as a positive sample. So that's the most dangerous thing in NAT testing, that we have false negative results, which is a real cause of concern. And as I ask these NAT people, those donors, 6 to 20 percent, as I am saying, even in voluntary donors, repeat voluntary donors, the prevalence of core antibody is something around 5 to 6 percent in several of my studies that I have undertaken. So what about those donors who continue to be, have B core reactive, but they are net negative, they have no answers to these. So therefore, my humble submission is that as far as I have been using for last almost more than a decade now, enhanced chemiluminescence continues to be my most favorite and most effective tool for ensuring safe blood for you because it has got proper calibration. Just one calibration in 28 days is required for enhanced chemiluminescence technology. Just one control in 24 hours is sufficient. And there's a lot of cost cutting like that, accuracy and precision, specificity and sensitivity. This is all touching 100%. And this is what we need in blood banks, as I say, and I'm, again, just automation. Yes, this is a fully automated system. You can have random sample studies. You can load sample any time. Just 55 minutes are re required for giving you the result for HIV 1 and 2, have B, have C, including the core antibody. And ideal thing that we say is now that encourage relatives and friends, well-wishers to become 
regular routine voluntary donors, sensitive screening tests, where I'll give number one preference to a enhanced chemiluminescence technology, and of course, NAT and LEs and all that are coming, but then screening of some markers like ALT and all that that is being done in USA, if levels of ALT are more than twice, it's better to defer the donor. And it just takes less than about one minute on spot to test a person. There are equipments available now for ALT and all these levels. There should be a proper national policy. There must be a hospital transfusion committee which should ensure that everything in hemovigilance is being discussed and worked out. Rational use of blood is zero risk transmission a possibility with my slide showing around 30 to 40 types of pathogens. Viral inactivation has come, pathogen inactivation has come, so many things have come into blood banking. But Dr. KK says 200 types of pathogens. I do not think as a transfusion specialist that any blood anywhere in the world will be 100% zero risk TTI blood available. So we have to go in for only safety measures as far as we know testing can be done. And therefore, my submission is we must encourage repeat regular voluntary donations in our country when donor is being tested every third month for all these TTIs. And we know that the donor is very safe. That's first step that we should do. Number second step, my request will be that we should encourage technologies like enhanced chemiluminescence technologies. And you have a right to ask the labs or the blood banks when you ask for a product that is it tested by enhanced chemiluminescence technology. And this is what I would like to recommend. I like to say, and I'll say, jab se chala hu main, meri manzil pe nazar hai. Ever since I started my journey in medical profession, I have only one mission in my life. Jab se chala hu main, meri manzil pe nazar hai. Meel ke patharon ko in aankho ne nahi dekha. And what is my goal and aim is 100% repeat regular Volunteer donors, Zindagi ka yu zuba pe naam ana chahiye. Zindagi ka yu zuba pe naam ana chahiye. Admi ko admi ke kaam ana chahiye. Thank you very much, my dear ones. Anything related to transfusion services, I am at your service 24 hours, 365 days at 9811210662. Thank, Thank you, you very much, here, person and coach. Here, person. Thank God you, God Dr. Enke Bhatia, for such a, in detail about the various aspects of blood transfusion and your concern about also about the, how the government is not concerned. I don't I think we have a time add, for this. I just want to add that Dr. N.K. Bhatia is one person who has donated blood how many times? More than 210 times. Is one person who has donated his blood more than 210 times. So that should be a lesson to all of us. Running that time. Running donor. Uh, so, thank you very much. And now, discussion is I request uh, uh, both the uh, moderators to speak for half a minute, give their final comments. Okay. Dear Dr. Bhatia, uh, thanks a lot for your uh, uh, insight on uh, the blood banking practices in India. And I would also like to uh, uh, just highlight the point raised by Dr. Bhatia about HB, HB virus, B virus. Though all the people talk about HBSAG, but it's actually the uh, HB core testing, which is the antibody for B virus, which has a prevalence of 8 to 10 percent. And as rightly put by Dr. Bhatia, that is the major cause of concern. We are just testing only HBSAG and then releasing the blood which is like one of the major reasons for transmission transmitted diseases. And uh, we thanks Dr. Bhatia for raising this point. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I'll request Dr. O.P. Yadav and uh, Dr. Tiwari to please come here and present a memento to our moderators. Dr. Yadav and Dr. Tiwari.